In the last part of the series, part 46, we saw the first persecution of the church. We saw the apostles thrown in jail for the testimony of their faith. We saw an angel release them from prison and go and tell them to go back and preach. We then saw them get beaten. We then saw the seven selected that would go help the neglected widows while also bringing the gospel in the other areas outside of Jerusalem. The gospel can bring persecution and challenges. The lives of the apostles are pure evidence of this. But from their challenges and persecution, the gospel was brought to those who need to hear it. From all of the events from the first six chapters of the book of Acts, we will now see how the power of the gospel was taken outside of Jerusalem and through others' persecution, even more were able to be saved. Let's just jump right in. Let's begin. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freed men, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and those from Sicilia and Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and Elohim. And they stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes. And they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, This man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that his Yahshua of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who sat in the council looked steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. Then the high priest said, Are these things so? And he said, Brethren and fathers, listen. The Elohim of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran, and said to him, Get out of your country and from your relatives, and come to a land that I will show you. Then he came out of the land of the Chaldeans, and dwelt in Haran. And from there, when his father was dead, he moved him to this land in which you now dwell. And Elohim gave him no inheritance in it, not even enough to set his foot on. But even when Abraham had no child, he promised to give it to him for a possession and to his descendants after him. But Elohim spoke in this way, that his descendants would dwell in a foreign land and that they would bring them into bondage and oppress them 400 years. And the nation to whom they will be in bondage, I will judge, said Elohim. And after that, they shall come out and serve me in this place. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs, becoming envious, sold Joseph into Egypt. But Elohim was with him and delivered him out of all his troubles and gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now a famine and great trouble came over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And the second time, Joseph was made known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to the Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent and called his father Jacob and all his relatives to him, 75 people. So Jacob went down to Egypt and he died, he and our fathers. And they were carried back to Sheshem and laid in the tomb that Abraham brought for a sum of money from the sons of Hamor, the father of Sheshem. But when the time of the promise drew near, which Elohim had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose who did not know Joseph. This man dealt treacherously with our people and oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies, so that they might not live. At this time, Moses was born, and was well pleasing to Elohim, and he was brought up in his father's house for three months. But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdoms of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and deeds. Now when he was forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed, and struck down the Egyptian. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that Elohim would deliver them by his hand. But they did not understand. 
and the next day he appeared to two of them as they were fighting and tried to reconcile them saying, men, you are brethren, why do you wrong one another? But he who did his neighbor wrong pushed him away saying, who made you a ruler and judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Then at this saying, Moses fled and became a dweller in the land of Midian where he had two sons. And when 40 years had passed, an angel of Yahweh appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight and he drew near to observe. The voice of Yahweh came to him saying, I am the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. Then Yahweh said to him, Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? is the one Elohim sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out, after he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt, in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses who said to the children of Israel, Yahweh your Elohim will raise up a prophet for you like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear. This is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, the one who received the living oracles to give to us, whom our fathers would not obey, but rejected. And in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. As for this Moses, who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, offered sacrifices to the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then Elohim turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer me slaughtered animals as sacrifices during forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You also took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, images which you made to worship, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he appointed instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen, which our fathers having received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles, whom Elohim drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before Elohim and asked to find a dwelling for the Elohim of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me? Says Yahweh, or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of Elohim, and Yahshua standing at the right hand of Elohim, and said, Look, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of Elohim. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him, with one accord, and they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul, and they stoned Stephen as he was calling on Elohim and saying, Adonai Yahshua, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Adonai, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So we now have gone through the events of the first martyr of the church, certainly not the last. Stephen was the first one to lose his life for the gospel. He was one of the seven men selected to take care of the needs of the neglected widows. They accused him of blaspheming Moses and Elohim. Acts chapter 7 really displays the stubbornness of Israel. 
He started from the beginning with Abraham, on to Joseph, then Moses, then the prophets, explaining that the Holy Spirit was working consistently for Israel. But they continued to reject him until they committed their worst act yet, murdering Yahshua. Much of this is self-explanatory, but I do want to cover some important things to take note of. So in the beginning of this, Stephen was accused of blaspheming Moses and Elohim. Understand that the gospel was spreading now, but while the gospel was spreading, resistance to it was spreading as well. The resistance to the gospel went from discussion to debate, from debate to accusations of slander, and from slander to violence. This just makes me remember what Yahshua said. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. They hated Yahshua. So those that went teaching his truth were hated and persecuted as well. This is what we see with Stephen. The antagonists were stirring up the people by convincing them that the essence of Israel's faith, the things held most sacred, like the temple, the law, Moses, and even Elohim, was under attack by Stephen. They weren't thinking about the works of the Messiah and what Stephen was teaching about the gospel. They were protecting the core traditional religion. They thought he was coming to change the customs that Moses gave them. They were resisting the Holy Spirit. They were resisting Elohim's plans. We should take this as a lesson for example, because this is exactly what happens today in organized religion. So many people have gotten comfortable in their organized worship of Elohim. They enjoy the customs that they've grown up in, from going to church every Sunday, to paying tithes faithfully, to their celebrating of Christmas and Easter. They love the customs of churchianity. And just like Israel resisted the disciples of the faith proclaiming the true gospel, they do the same thing today with anyone that tries to teach biblical correctness and steadfastness in the word. Breaking free from religious traditions and giving the Holy Spirit reign in our lives so that he can do miraculous works. Yahshua said our traditions passed down make the word of Elohim have no effect in our lives. And just like the children of Israel were resisting the movement of the gospel, but still thought they were serving Elohim, it's the same thing that the modern church does today. They feel like they are serving God but they resist the true gospel and at the same time reject and hurt those who want to stand up for it. Let this whole chapter minister to you whether you are the one being persecuted or you have done the persecuting. We will see Saul, who we know as the Apostle Paul, was a main one who stoned Stephen and look at how Elohim later used him. Let this chapter minister to you. Acts chapter 7. Now in this chapter, Stephen summarized the history of Israel in his sermon. In verses 35 through 40, he pointed out that Moses, the very one the Jewish leaders accused him of speaking against, was also rejected by the leaders' forefathers, meaning that they were repeating the same mistakes of their forefathers. And the Moses, who they were trying to defend and uphold, spoke of the coming of Yahshua in Deuteronomy chapter 18. He challenged the leaders to either believe all of what Moses taught or none of it. That same challenge applies today. So many want to nitpick through the Bible and choose what they want to stand on and believe. We can't do this though. If we believe it, we must believe and apply it all. This is the main problem that we have in the church today and why so many people reject the faith. It's because so many people are picking what they want to apply and ignoring the rest, which only brings hypocrisy. Verse 51 and 52 really summarize what happened with Israel and at the same time, Stephen put the council on the spot. He said, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers. You see, the members of the council wanted only to appear like they were open to Elohim's truth. But they and their ancestors rarely wanted to hear Elohim's truth through his messengers. Go back in the Old Testament and you'll see they persecuted every prophet that came to teach Elohim's words and the council did the same thing with Yahshua, the one who all the prophets foretold of coming. They became his murderers. Horrible. If you grew up in the church, you must go back and review that you are not making the same mistake as the council did. People love displaying that they care about Elohim and his will. 
They think it's evident by showing that they sit in church pews or volunteer in the church or pay their tithes. But when the truth of the scriptures is put forth, they reject it the same way the Jewish leaders did. This is how many people today become modern day Pharisees. Don't let the same thing happen to you. Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit and all he wanted to do was please Elohim. They stoned him because of the truth he put forth. He was killed, but he was comforted by Yahshua. This event gave the future martyrs of the church much faith. He stood faithful until his last breath. Let's continue. Now Saul was consenting to his death. At the time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. And it is at this point where we are introduced to an extremely important character. Saul consented to Stephen's death. Saul at this time was an enemy of the works of the early church and helped lead the persecution. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Messiah to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lamed were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city, and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of Elohim. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of Elohim and the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of Yahweh, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Adun, Yahshua. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of Elohim could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of Elohim. Repent therefore of this your wickedness, and pray Elohim if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by the bitterness and bound by iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Adun for me, that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. So when they had testified and preached the word of Yahweh, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Philip went to preach the gospel to Samaria, fulfilling Yahshua's commission. Remember, the Jews and Samaritans hated each other. The Jews considered the Samaritans half-breeds and religious deviants. The Samaritans rejected the Old Testament scriptures past the five book of Moses. But the message of the gospel went past this division between Jews and Samaritans. There was now a loving fellowship of believers showing there was no need for hate or racism in the church. Yahshua died for the sins of the whole world. Remember Peter in Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. He was given the keys to the kingdom. He was the one Elohim would use to open the doors to the Jews, which he did in chapter two. Now the Samaritans in chapter eight. Soon we will see him open the door for the Gentiles in chapter 10. Peter and John were the official messengers that distributed the gospel to the Samaritans once they heard it was accepted by them. The Samaritans needed to know that salvation came from the Jews. The Jews in turn needed to understand that the same salvation came to Samaritans. In John chapter 17, Yahshua prayed that all who will believe in him be one, that the world may believe that the Father sent him. With the tremendous hatred between the Jews and the Samaritans, 
Elohim demonstrated that they would be united together as one church. The Jews brought the gift of the Holy Spirit to the Samaritans, in which they received, and now showed that they were both one in the Messiah. The gospel brings us together. It should never separate us regardless of nationality or race. But we will see even more unity soon. Just understand that the union of the Jews and Samaritans in one church was a major event. Now in regards to Simon, he is an example of believers who believe but still have a long way to go. He was a former magician but saw true power and wanted it. He asked the disciples to give him the gift of the Holy Spirit, but because of his past, he assumed that he should pay for it as others paid him to receive his secrets of magic. He might have thought that this was the best approach with Peter, but he quickly learned the error in his thinking. The gift of the Holy Spirit isn't something sold. It is a gift given freely. This part of the scriptures is just to show us not to bring our past ways of thinking into our new belief in Yahshua. Your old ways do not apply in this wonderful gift the Father has given us. We are to be new creations, and when we apply our old way of thinking to our new faith, you will not produce the right fruit. Now an angel of Yahweh spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, and go towards the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Yahshua to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Yahshua HaMashiach is the son of Elohim. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the spirit of Yahweh caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Have you ever been out and the Holy Spirit speaks to you to witness to someone else? Maybe you thought that you were hearing things, or maybe the devil also spoke in your ear to mind your business and leave that person alone. This portion of scripture witnesses to you to listen to the Holy Spirit. The angel told Philip to move and he didn't question it. He moved. The Ethiopian was reading Isaiah. He was searching the scriptures, but still needed understanding. He was on an exact portion of scripture that spoke of Yahshua, but the Ethiopian did not understand it was fulfilled through Yahshua. Philip was sent to provide him with the understanding that was needed. After hearing this truth, he wanted to be baptized, and he was. Philip listened to the angel and it brought the gospel to a prominent Ethiopian that brought the gospel to Ethiopia. If Philip did not listen, he would have slowed down the spread of the gospel. This part says so much to me, but the one thing I want you to focus on is obedience. Because he speaks to you the same way. You must listen to him. The Holy Spirit is at work through us. And if we just yield to his voice, we will help save souls before the great day of Yahweh. Listen to his voice and ignore the devil. Okay, so we spoke a great deal about many things in this part. Here is what you need to know from this part in the series. 1. Stephen was the first one to lose his life for the gospel. 2. Acts chapter 7 really displays the stubbornness of Israel. He started from the beginning with Abraham, on to Joseph, then Moses, then the prophets, displaying that the Holy Spirit was working consistently for Israel, but they continued to reject him until they committed their worst act yet murdering Yahshua. 
Three, the resistance to the gospel went from discussion to debate, from debate to accusations of slander, and from slander to violence. Four, just like Israel resisted the disciples proclaiming the true gospel, many in the organized church do the same thing today with anyone that tries to teach biblical correctness and steadfastness in the word. Break free from religious traditions and give the Holy Spirit reign in your lives so that he can do miraculous works. Five, just like the children of Israel were resisting the movement of the gospel, but still thought they were serving Elohim, it's the same thing that the modern church does today. They feel that they are serving God, but they resist the true gospel and at the same time reject and hurt those who want to stand in it. 6. In verses 35-40 through 40 of Acts chapter 7, Stephen pointed out that Moses, the very one the Jewish leaders accused him of speaking against, was also rejected by the leader's forefathers, meaning that they were repeating the same mistakes of their forefathers. 7. Stephen challenged the leaders to either believe all of what Moses taught or none of it. That same challenge applies today. So many want to nitpick through the Bible and choose what they want to stand on and believe. We cannot do this. If we believe it, we must believe and apply it all. 8. Verses 51 and 52 of Acts chapter 7 really summarize what happened with Israel and at the same time, Stephen put the council on the spot. The members of the council wanted only to appear like they were open to Elohim's truth, but they and their ancestors really wanted to hear Elohim's truth through his messengers. 9. Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit and all he wanted to do was please Elohim. They stoned him because of the truth he put forth. This event gave the future martyrs of the church much faith. He stood faithful until his last breath. 10. Saul was an enemy of the works of the early church and helped lead the persecution. 11. The message of the gospel went past this division between Jews and Samaritans. There was now a loving fellowship of believers showing that there was no need for hate or racism in the church. Yahshua died for the sins of the whole world. 12. The Samaritans needed to know that salvation came from the Jews. The Jews, in turn, needed to understand that the same salvation came to the Samaritans. 13. With the tremendous hatred between the Jews and the Samaritans, Elohim demonstrated that they would be united together as one church. The Jews brought the gift of the Holy Spirit to the Samaritans, in which they received, and now showed that they were both one and the Messiah. The gospel brings us together. It should never separate us, regardless of nationality or race. 14. The gift of the Holy Spirit isn't something sold. It is a gift given freely. This part of the scripture is just to show you not to bring our past ways of thinking into our new belief in Yahshua. Your old ways do not apply to this wonderful gift the Father has given us. We are to be new creations, and when we apply our old way of thinking to our new faith, you will not produce the right fruit. 15. You must listen to him. The Holy Spirit is at work through us, and if we just yield to his voice, we will help save souls before the great day of Yahweh. Listen to his voice and ignore the devil. There's a great work in all of us to do. We are stewards of the gospel, and we are commissioned to spread his word and be living examples of our faith. The apostles' examples show us the proper conduct as believers. They made spreading the gospel their number one goal, and from their conviction and obedience, we know the gospel today. As we go through these events, we see challenge. But because of the steadfastness and conviction, the gospel was able to be spread. The Holy Spirit wants to work in you the same way. He has a work to do through you. The devil knows this and he wants to block you from this. He wants to distract you or tell you that voice that you're hearing from Elohim really isn't him. He wants to tell you to wait and let someone else do it. Cancel that voice and don't listen to him. If you feel a tug on your heart to preach the gospel, then preach the gospel. If you feel your spirit is nudging you to talk to that stranger, then talk to them and see where it leads. This is what it means to be led by the Holy Spirit. And if we stop being led, then the gospel stops. There will be a great falling away. It's already happening. But we should not contribute to it. It will happen on its own. But that does not mean the Holy Spirit is still not working through us to bring the truth to those that need to hear it. Don't ever stop being a witness. First strengthen yourself and then go out and be a witness for others. We have work to do. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this blessed you, please don't forget to like it and share it. 
If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who contributes to this channel. Your outpouring of love and support truly helps me and assists me greatly. You have no idea. Thank you for your love and support. Thanks for watching, everyone. I love you all.